G'day everybody and welcome to another episode of Automotive Cars. In today's episode, we're gonna dive into the Pacers engine, pull it apart, and let's see if we can find any reason why this car may have been left out in the bush for so long. Yes, good everyone, my name's DJ and thank you so much for joining us on the night episode of Automotive Cars. Today, we will be pulling apart what is the original matching numbers engine for the Pacer. Now, my offside Tim here is a little too eager. You ready? You right there? I'm good. You good? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, we're pretty keen to get into this and find out if there's anything going on inside the chambers, going inside the gearbox that uh, may explain why it was left out in the creek where we found it. So uh, it is a full cast iron block, cast iron head, and a very heavy engine, um, mainly because it was designed to be cast out of aluminium. And the last minute they changed it to be cast out of cast iron. So it's very thick um, bore walls inside it. So we want to take as much weight off as we can to be able to actually get the engine up onto the concrete because my shed is on a ridiculous angle for some reason. It's all dirt and carpet floors. So strip as much weight off as we can here and then we'll get up onto an engine stand. And um, yeah, we'll start pulling it all apart. And carry on now. Good. We have the Pacer motor sitting up on a stand here where we can work on it. We, uh, we just tried to put it on that little stand and it just started to bend it. So we've got something substantially stronger that's going to be able to hold it. Unfortunately, we'll make it a bit hard to rotate, but we have a hoist with us here for a reason. Um, we've started pulling off a few parts. Water pump has obviously got a lot of corrosion and metal flakes in there, which kind of makes us wonder if the cooling channels are actually going to be worth saving on this block. So. With an acid bath, we, uh, we won't find out till then, I don't think, unless when we pull the head off, we find something down there. Uh, gearbox. Gearbox over here was full of dirt and junk. That all came out from within the bow housing. That's a mix of uh, dirt, twigs, rust, all sorts, just uh, from sitting in the creek where it was. That's looking too bad, but nothing that can't be replaced, rebuilt, and fixed. Luckily, there's only a three-speed transmission. So there's not a whole lot going on inside of them that needs to be repaired. So we'll pull that apart later on if we get time. At least pull the top cover off and see how it looks inside. As for this, the job now, we want to get all these manifolds off. We want to get our valve cover off because we really want to get down to our head. See what's going on inside there and see what the top of the pistons are looking like on this motor. Last time I pulled one of these apart, it had been used as a speedway car and the... Uh, Methanol had just mounted through the top of the pistons, which was quite amusing. Um, as for block damage at the moment, none that we can see, which is great. So we can't see any con rods coming out the side of the block or the crank. Uh, we haven't tried rotating it yet. We might give that a go first if we can figure out a way of doing that. And um, yeah, we still have the original Pacer engine number, which is in there. And um, it's quite interesting. I only kind of itched it on. I didn't really make much effort to distinguish the pacer blocks from any of the other slant 225s. So anyway, we'll um, yeah, get you back on high plaps until we get down to our head here and uh, yeah, we'll just start pulling bits and pieces off. So here comes the next exciting bit. We'll uh, pull this valve cover off and see what it looks like underneath. Uh, normally this gives a good indication as to uh, the condition of the engine. Uh, now I was just thinking, this engine, this car, the Pacer, we believe to be abandoned around the early 90s, just from the relics that we can find inside the car. Um, which means that this car has been abandoned, not just around, but has been abandoned 
for as long as I've been alive, which is um, really quite fascinating to me. Anyway, let us pull this valve cover off now and see what horrors await us below. Well, actually, that's not bad. Um, it's wet. I mean, I don't know if it's wet with oil or if it's wet with water or a combination of the two, but um, that was actually kind of anticlimactic. Let's get you in for a closer look and you can see what I'm talking about. So all the rocker arms have some sort of coating of oil on them. We've got a little bit of movement in some of the rocker arms. So, you know, we're not completely seized up, which is good. We haven't been able to rotate the engine. It's, it's too stiff to rotate. Uh, probably the worst part is all the dried wrinkly oil on top of the valve springs. But besides that, I've seen daily drivers with worse engine wear than that. Now, another interesting thing is that we noticed oh, when we took the manifold off, that those intake ports, yeah, they're not going to breathe too well. That is just full of uh, rust flakes in there. Absolutely packed in, which is uh, quite amusing. I don't know why they're in there. That's a lot of metal to be rusting away inside the intakes there. Anyway, now we'll uh, get to the real fun part, which is undoing the head bolts, pulling this head off, and seeing what those pistons are like underneath. Okie dokie. That's the last bracket. We should be able to lift this head now. I'm just going onto this bar here. Yep. Or not. Locating stuff, maybe? There we go. Sounds like it. Sweet. Yeah, all right. So, lots of rust, lots of debris, but smooth walls on that one. That one there's probably the worst. Seems a bit gross at the top. Yeah, the pistons are definitely corroded. That one looks like it'll be sloppy as. It's like a, you can see a gap around the, right around the piston. Gasket off. It's a steel gasket. That's cool. Oh, I reckon we could save this. I was, oh, there's that locating dowel that I was giving you trouble. One at my end, too. Uh, cool. Um, yeah, I guess we'll bring the camera in a bit closer so you guys can see. There's a chance, eh? But um, okay. if we can get this. Soak it. Yeah. I definitely think there's a chance. So yeah, starting at piston one, we have a lot of debris inside there. But once you get past the debris, the wall's actually pretty smooth. Uh, obviously piston two is up. There is a chunk, oh, there's more tools on the ground. There is a chunk missing in the top of the piston there. So I reckon all the rings are gonna be absolutely had it, which is to be expected. Uh, this one's definitely had some water, so I'd say this valve was open for all those years which is why I've got more rust there. So if anything's gonna stop us, I reckon it'll be that piston, uh, that ball there. But I'm saying that, that block over there, which I'm not telling you what it is yet, that had even worse sidewalls and we're able to fix it, so that's good. Um, that again, number four is smooth. We can't test that one, though we get through there. I reckon, yeah, a good soaking, and that will, we'll be able to free those up. And that one's a little bit rough as well. But overall, that block is uh, definitely in a savable condition, in my opinion. Um, again, it just depends on how bad all this corrosive rust is and if we can get away with um, the water channels. Yeah, oh, um, what's next? Okay, so uh, we've just been the last couple of minutes going over this block and scraping bits away and having a good look at it, and it's really not looking good in, uh, in the block's favor. First of all, in here where the water pump goes, uh, that is a lot of uh, corrosive rust, not just on the backing there, but also down in here. And the flakes that are coming off the cylinder walls are a good four millimeters thick, which means that's a lot of material that has rusted away on the inside of those cylinder walls, or the outside of the cylinder walls, I should say. So um, the structural integrity of the block and the cooling capacity like efficiency now is really compromised with that. Uh, we jump here into cylinder one, 
and the top ledge here, um, that's really bad. That's like two to three mil in there. So this is um, going to be bored out quite a lot just to fit the right size pistons in there that are going to work. Um, so that's, that's not good either. Um, if this were just an ordinary slant, we would say throw it away and let's go find another one. But the fact that it's the matching numbers block to our chassis and to our gearbox kind of is why we're in dilemma whether we keep it or not. So uh, we also found out, scraping back here, that um, I say this is the reason it was abandoned. The one, two Welsh plugs are blown through and um, they've sealed, tried to seal up with this gunk. So I reckon that this engine overheated, pulled into the creek, we'll come get it later and just no one ever came back to rescue it. So um, again, if it's overheated, has the block warped, has the head warped, you know, what kind of other damage is going on there as well. Uh, so yeah, we'll, we'll flip it over, we'll pull the sump off, and we'll have a look to see what it's like under there. But now I'm kind of thinking that block over there is about 50 millimeters shorter than this one. So we'll fit in the engine bay nicely, but the gearbox behind that is a lot larger, so we'll have to end up cutting the floor that we just put in to get the five speed to fit. That's original and cool. That makes whooshy noises and cool. Ah, I don't know. Ah, let's pull the sump off and see if we can even rotate this engine as well. That's another thing. Alrighty, next fun part. Let's take the sump off and see what's underneath. With a probable pry bar. Did you miss one? Maybe. You missed one out. Ah, oh, it comes off easy. Oh, oh gosh. That's disgusting. I'm glad I didn't eat much of a breakfast this morning. Oh, that smells bad. Oh, that, that smells really bad. Damn. Wow, look at the... The, <laughs> the sludge is just, just like stuck in the bottom of the pistons. That is just vile. That is really bad. And there's like parts of the crank that are dry and not covered oh, in sludge. Yeah, drive it. Yeah, drive oh, it. yeah, right there. Look at that. Okay. <laughs> Would you like some oil jelly? <laughs> um, I'm going to put some flywheel bolts on, see if we can now rotate. With uh, all that friction gone, we might be able to actually get some movement. What do you reckon? Yeah or no? No? No! <laughs> No, nah. that is solid. We can take some of the glue and put it on the other end. Yeah, you think with glue like that, it'll be lubricated. Yeah, that is nasty. That water and dirt and mud has been mixing for quite some time. That's yeah, <laughs> that's so bad. We're gonna get cancer now from touching all this stuff. Oh, look at that. That is just horrible. Absolutely horrible. Um. Not sure I want to build this engine anymore. It's disgusting. I sort of don't know what to do next now. Um, it's, I mean, you always hope for the best, but expect the worst. But when it actually does happen, you I kind of lost as to what to do next because I really want to keep the original engine and the original gearbox in this car just because we have it. Um, and it, I don't know, I think we'll take it to the engine builders, strip it, strip it right down, take it to them, and then get them to yeah, put their opinion and see if they can fix it. If they can put massive oversized um, pistons in, we might be able to get away with that um, and just do yeah, a whole new bottom end like we did with the, the CA20. Um, yeah, so I haven't completely lost hope in this engine yet. Um, we'll continue to strip it down. Um, before we go though, we might just pull a cover off that gearbox and see what it looks like inside of there. Um, 
but yeah, I'm kind of, I don't know. Well, I'm going to keep measuring up the engine that's behind me um, and see if the gearbox can or can't fit in that uh, the, the tunnel. I haven't seen anyone do this conversion, but I, it's, it's not an unusual conversion. Um, it's just a matter of how people done it. If I can find someone who's done it, then that'll be great. Um, but in the meantime, let's get that gearbox, pull the cover off of that, and um, <laughs> you can see this driver. <laughs> Uh, I was always thought it was a myth that oil went that gloopy, eh? Always falls a myth. Let's pull the cover off that gearbox and see what it looks like inside of there. Okay, let's see what's inside of here. Oh, sorry. I need that pick to help break the cover. How to use tools at home. There we go. That's trash. Wow. That is trash. So, in the comments below, what engine do you think we should put into the Pacer? Because I don't think it's going to be the original Free Speed and original Slant 225. That is going to be worth more than it's worth to fix. Um, and another note, matching numbers Pacer gearbox casing for sale. <laughs> uh, last rebuilt, never. <laughs> that is so bad. Oh dear. Well, there you have it, guys. That is the Pacer engine, driveline, transmission, gearbox, teardown. Um, I'm left wanting more. I really hope that we could have used all of this, especially after the effort of going and pulling the floor in that Pacer. We might have to cut a big chunk of it out just to fit a modern gearbox in. Uh, yeah, guys, any legit suggestions, chuck it in the comments below. Um, have you seen a gearbox? been repaired from this state before. Do you know someone who can do it? Do you know someone who's got another piece of block somewhere? Um, yeah, any constructive information, let us know. Until then, we'll catch you guys on another episode of All Love Cards. See you later.